The soul of Garifuna music is undeniably anchored by the polyrhythmic depth and timbre of the Garifuna drum. Cylindrical or cone-shaped, this wooden percussion instrument, tautly wrapped on one end by a thin membrane, often the cured hide of a sheep or deer, is central in any genre of ethnic song and dance. The up-tempo measure of the primero, or the subtle register of the segundo, is a uniquely impressive sound. Together, they evoke strong emotions. In ritual, we have three drums. Um, and those drums symbolize um, the totality of Garifuna life, past, present, and future. And they play their part in representing um, the Garifuna worldview, Garifuna cosmology, if you will. In secular life, we use, generally use the primero and the segunda and, um, to play the various types of music that we use for festive occasions. Um, and when I say festive occasions, of course, I don't just mean fun times because uh, we also mask our grief, our sorrows, our burdens in song and dance. 83-year-old Austin Rodriguez, a resident of Dangriga, is a master craftsman. His skill in drum making is unrivaled. Using rudimentary tools, Rodriguez, whose instruments are renowned the world over, has been fashioning drums for almost 50 years. He is self-taught. I don't go nowhere and learn nothing. I just imagine how to make it and I make it true. Because I'm determined that I'm not to work with nobody. With strength of mind and sheer enthusiasm, Rodriguez set out to make his first drum. When I make my first drum, brethren, I cut it true when I use chainsaw. I cut it true. Because I cut it one time, I say I'm not going to cut it anymore, you know? And I keep on. Beginning is the whole thing, but I mean, interest behind starting something, you know? When you get into it, you start to show itself to you. This could be the way, this could be the way, this could be the way, until you get up there. Unlike his brief learning curve, over time, Rodriguez has risen to become a preeminent Garifuna sculptor, earning his place in the pantheon of Belizean art. Following closely in his footsteps are daughters Norali and Detha. This is the mahogany log that we use. We use mahogany mayflower and cedar. This process, we, uh, my sister needs to cut the both ends to level the both ends. Then from that process, we're going to find the diameter of the log. In the continuum of Garifuna Duo, the perpetual cycle of carrying on tradition, these siblings are the future of drum making. I say my he could show me how to do the drum and how to use a chainsaw, but he never wanted me to use a chainsaw because then he used to tell me, oh, you're a little girl, you can't do that, or you can't do that. So when um, he decided to go to the States and he promised my man, mom that he was going to send money home to run the home, but he find tools out there that he wanted to bring back. So. Um, he couldn't send, so I decided to start doing the jumps on my own. He left some shells there and I start covering them. And then when the shells finish, I started to dig out the jumps. While the process is arduous, the drum, when crafted to perfection, is a symbol of the Garifna spirit of endurance. That tenacity is celebrated in the poem, Drums of My Fathers. I am the hollowed, hallowed, haloed trunk and the hills and the vales and the streams and the soul of Africa. Roy Cayetano's ode to the power of the drum, its rhythms representing the very fabric of Garifuna life, is the embodiment of the combined effect of the human and metaphysical relationship. I had started the first few lines of a poem that I wanted to write that um, said something about the soul of the Garifuna people, the essence of being Garifuna. And I started the first few lines, um, drums of my father's rumbling in my bones. And the words just came. The words just came. I think it must have been written in something like 20 minutes. It was like dictated. In Garifna, we have a phenomenon called Icha uh, And I think this is a high level of inspiration where you, the universe speaks through you, the ancestors speak through you. Um, we have that in Garifna music where people speak of learning a song rather than of having composed it because of the way the songs are given to them. 
So was the preordained talent of Austin Rodriguez. His daughters, disciples of the trade, are also making a name for themselves. In this family, the students have become teachers. When my daughter make drum, and the one that I make with them, you could see the difference. She's very careful when she's working. You could know the difference. He would boast, you know, and tell her, oh, my daughter could do better drum than I do. She also do different styles and different design of drum. You know, sometimes um, I teach him different things that I, you know, design on my own. What they have learned collectively after years of employing deer hide as a percussive surface of choice is that sheepskin is a more resilient leather. It sounds better too. When you go to take out the fur, we use knife, sharp your knife, as sharp as you could, then you work it. Yeah. Because sheepskin is not easy to, um, to, to take out the fur. You have to get the knife sharp. Then your drum, you get the rims, the top and the bottom rim, and you get it to the, the midline. Then you have to wet the skin so that it can fold the way you want it to, you know? When you put it on, wrap it up, and you just put on it. Once completed and finely tuned, the garao or drum, is regal. It symbolizes the progression of the Garifuna people. In Dangriga, a shrine has been erected in its honor, bearing the namesake of the famous poem. The present incorporating the past and the future emerging from the present. Um, that is why we have the, the drums of my father's monument at the entrance to old Dangriga, uh, to proclaim to the world the importance of um, the drum. Reporting for News 5, I am Isanika Etano.